All right, hey guys, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Rick Huntsman, I am the founder of Day One. I'm here with a good friend of mine, uh, Quince. What's up, yeah, like you said, uh, this is Quince. I've, uh, I'm one of the lead uh, musicians in the band Out Chasing Lions. Uh, I help run the group Hold Down Upstate um, and a couple other things. Sure, yeah, yeah. a thousand, a couple thousand other, other things. things. Busiest sure. man in, in Northern New York right here. Um, so, uh, we're sitting here, coming to you live from American Top Team Watertown. Uh, just hanging out, just gonna have a conversation today, kinda let you guys know a little bit what we're about. Um, and really, I'd like to uh, kinda have Quince talk a little bit more about what this whole down upstate thing is, um, how it started, the ideas behind it. And uh, yes, yeah, so if you guys are out there, if you're checking us out, drop us a comment, say something here or there. Um, if it's worth responding to, maybe we'll say something. So I like cool. that. Yeah, Quinn, like leave that. it off, man. Let us let us know what's up. Sure, sure. So, uh, I mean, I guess I uh, I moved out up into the area right around 2012. Didn't really know many people at all, um, but I had a very strong conviction in what I wanted to do, um, and and you know, and how I wanted to go about it. And it was just that process of having a purpose uh, that really was able to drive <laughs> me into you know, the successes here or there that I've come across. So, uh, you know, Rick brought this whole uh, idea up to me, this sort of podcast style platform. And I thought it was a good idea. I'm like, you know, what do you want to talk about? And uh, he's like, well, you know, him working with day one and having that same sort of mentality, he said he wants to talk about the process. <laughs> and, you know, I always, that's my mantra, trust in the process trust in the process, and people ask what that means. And, and I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, before you can actually get into a process, you have to uh, better understand your purpose. Sure, sure. Uh, because your purpose is the driving uh, factor and the lead motivator for why you do anything. And if without a purpose, uh, the, the process and your direction is gonna be rather aimless. Um, so as far as speaking on purpose, you know, I can only speak, you know, for myself. You know, everyone is gonna have a different purpose that leads them to become more focused, to be more passionate, and things like that. Um, you know, and that's perfectly understandable. Uh, for me, I think a lot of my uh, purpose came from, you know, actually wanting to change how I was living around, how I communicated with myself, how I communicated with the world around me, and I just wanted kind of to live at a higher level, you know, day in and day out, uh, no matter what aspect of life it was, whether it was, uh, you know, working on my own uh, issues or hangups or social situations or financial situations. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to be better every day. Um, and I found that art for me uh, was that tool uh, to be able to communicate myself uh, in that way so people could hear me and so I could hear me you know because I, I always felt I had a lot to office offer but not necessarily the uh, communicational tools uh, at hand or at least so I thought so uh, initially a lot of my purpose was um, to, uh, for a better need to communicate myself so that got me more into writing uh, that got me more into being more uh, conscious and aware of uh, my lifestyle, you know, I had to make different lifestyle choices to be healthier, whether it's working out, whether it's dietary, um, whether it's to slow down on the booze a little bit, what have you. Uh, but I found that all of these, uh, you know, all of these factors factored in to help me produce uh, a better outcome. And I found that like songs and music yeah. were they were the perfect marker to let me know where I stood, where I was, where my mind was, where my health was. I could look back in a song and hear all about it. Um, so I kind of used that as a marker and I started to see change, you know, and it would grow. And at first I didn't, you don't really, you don't know if anything's gonna happen from it, honestly. And so it's kind of scary because you're just out in the middle of nowhere, you know, just in like this big vacuum of space. And all you know is to work and you know why you're doing it, but you don't know what's gonna come. And once you start seeing things change around you, uh, whether within yourself or the company you keep 
or the opportunity and situations you find yourself in, you start to think, you're like, oh, is this actually working? This is actually working. Right, right, like right. all that hard work uh, does start to pay off. And that's one of the hardest things to overcome is that first step um, in trusting that that process is gonna get you somewhere. Now, it might not get you to where you think you need to be or where you want to be, but it's gonna get you somewhere to where you're gonna be able to understand the opportunity at hand, no matter the situation, and learn to adapt um, and continue on. So, you know, like I said, the process has a lot to do with uh, your individual purpose, and, uh, and then you'll be able to place out, you know, the steps of the, you know, that process as intended. Um, yeah, I, uh, so, shit, man, we could break it down. We could have several conversations based on so many things you just said right there. Sure. Um, one of the biggest things, uh, you know, me personally, I, I focus on a lot and really made the biggest change in my life, um, and I think that resonates with a lot of people, is that notion of purpose, mm -hmm. of, like, of finding your purpose and understanding that. Right. Um, one way that it was it was broken down uh, for me is that passion is for you, purpose is for others. I like right? that. And when you can link those two things together, that's when you find fulfillment with life. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and uh, so, what was it? I don't know what five six years ago we met. Right. Yep. Um, Something like that. Yeah. Uh, so Quince was doing a lot of work with my my brother um, Ill Theory. Uh, uh, Jonathan Huntsman, if you don't know him by that name. Um, and if you don't know him by that name, you guys are missing out. Uh, so check that out, Ill Theory, Quince. Public Knowledge out. Records, okay. Yes. Yep. Music Fusion Fest. Uh, he's, uh, not only is he a dope MC, but he's put on the longest running uh, mixed genre festival in upstate New York that absolutely. I know of, that I know of, so. Yeah, They're definitely the only one here in Watertown consistently, yeah, yep, yep. absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah, so uh, so those guys are working together. Uh, I met Quince, and uh, I, I don't think he'd really been doing Hold Down Up State too, too long when we kind of met. Mm -hmm. um, that was a big thing we started talking about, and uh, I didn't recognize that what it was at the time. Um, and then as, I, you know, as I've kind of grown and found like my own purpose and understood my own process and stuff like that and started tying it together in my mind, I think what was happening, what drew me to it so much is that through Hold Down Up State, you were able to um, take your passion of like art, mm -hmm. right, and your uh, and tie it into a purpose of reaching out and helping others yeah. um, expand and, and kind of like understand their purpose and their right. their process and their passion and stuff like that, right? Um, and it was one of the biggest things. Uh, you know, everybody I think goes through a spell where they they want to kind of leave the area. You know, winters are tough, economically it's depressed. It's, a lot of things not going great for it, man. Sure. Um, but but you know, meeting people like you and people that are willing to invest their passion into the community and help others do the same, man, and, and really find like a fulfilled and actualized purpose, I think is, is really significant. Um, so I guess uh, what was your hold on up, say, what was your thought behind that? Because that's my take on sure. it. You know? Sure. What was your thought behind No, that? you know, and I... Uh um, all those things you touched on, I find truth in. Uh, I, you know, honestly, it started once again with purpose. So when I was, when I first got up here, started the original Out Chasing Lions band, we got a foot in the door at a lot of these venues that have never, that, that were never opened up to hip hop right. or, or rap before. <laughs> and so that was just you and Rob. Me and Rob Malloy of uh, Wardrum uh, Records um, or Studios. And... You know, it was, it was a mix of like rock and rap and we could switch it up into acoustic. So it was super versatile. And it was hard for, if we just go up and we knock on the door and be like, hey, we do rap music. Right. They're like, ah, slam. Right, sure. But if we brought our acoustic guitar and played, you know, something airy like that right. and get them hooked right in, it was hard to say no. Right. And then of course later we come and plug in and yeah. you know blow yeah. the roof off. For but sure, sure. you know, I saw it, it was an opportunity, even though it was, all of this was new for me at the time, I also saw the opportunity was there because we were only playing with other, either cover bands or heavy metal bands, yeah, and there yeah, wasn't yeah. really a hip hop scene whatsoever. Sure. And so, um, you know, I would start to meet people like your brother, who was probably one of the first 
uh, MCs that I met up here. Sure. Um, and, you know, a bunch of people through his little set. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is uh, I would get my set time and I would split my time in half and I'd have your brother and I think, you know, Craig and Stowe yeah. and yeah. all these other people I met in the community involved mm -hmm. in the, the little hip hop scene that was going on. And I'd split my time up and let them get that. Right. So we had like our little show within a larger show. Sure. And it was cool. And, and you, you know, we would get good feedback. And more importantly, it was beneficial for the, the culture of hip hop. Right. You know, that whole little scene. And that's when I understood there was such a strong need, you know, because instead of me going to all these different uh, business owners saying, hey, let, let us do, you know, a hip hop show, you know, we, we, we can do it like this, this, and this. What I did instead is I would put on shows myself right. and then present the entire show to, uh, to the venue. Okay. And then they, right, right. you know, um, finally let us in, I think. Right. Uh, so got a little switch up to the marketing game. Instead. Yes. Yeah, right. Instead of us, play, you know, playing a small role, right. they're hitting us up kind of for the whole shebang. Right, right, um, right. And so that's what I started calling Hold Down and Upstate because I was taking sure. all these upstate artists that might not have that uh, voice on the, um, I don't know what you want to call the, you know, the bar scene. Right, um, right. the bar scene, I think. The bar scene, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, that level of uh, reach sure. that the bar scene will give you. Sure. Uh, so, you know, that was the original Hold Down Upstate, and, you know, I started throwing uh, bigger and bigger shows, and uh, I ended up going back to school right over at JCC and some business classes because I wanted to better understand the uh, the true opportunity the potential of the right. opportunity here right. and I recognize that whether you're a artist first starting out um, or if you're a business owner right. just starting out you're going through the same steps and processes and people that are going to doubt you and oppositions and things like that and I found that it is better to work together you yeah. know they I think I remember reading a quote where they're like if you want to go someplace fast do it yourself uh, but if you want to go and travel the distance yeah you're gonna have to do it together sure. with people sure and so that's when I started thinking uh, more like a business owner right and speaking with more business owners and right. seeing what their actual needs were you know as far as being able to reach uh, you know their clients out um, and I just found we had so much in common that I tried to incorporate the different businesses, different local yeah. businesses, and the different local artists of all genres, right. um, mixing together and linking and networking. Um, so we weren't dependent on any outside force right. or source. Right, right. And, and so it's kind of just grown from there, sure. really. Sure. Um, but it all stemmed from the, the purpose of the need of right. growing a scene that wasn't there or starting a scene that wasn't necessarily there, right. or at least at the level that it could have been at. Right. So kind of putting yourself at the, the epicenter of the action, right? right? So you're you're starting you're starting action. You're starting all these conversations, and even yep. um, so, like you said, and what I've noticed a lot, especially over probably the last probably the last year or so, um, is that you do a lot of uh, promoting of like the local businesses and stuff. Sure. And, um, I, I know uh, there's been a lot of times I've seen you share something. You're, you'll turn me on to like a small little business that's just kind of cropping up. You know, yeah. like juice bar here, this deli here, this is dope, this and that. Sure. You're really linked into kind of the lifeblood of the community. You know, which um, I think is is really crucial too, especially as uh, you know, as like Fort Drum gets bigger in the area, kind of builds up and up and up. It's easy mm -hmm. for everything to kind of get commercialized in that, uh, like the uniqueness of that. What is our local scene and our local kind of heartbeat? You know, kind of. Yeah. could go away if it wasn't for you know guys like you kind of keeping that awareness you know? sure sure definitely you know certainly people like myself because there are a bunch of different uh, organizations that do similar things sure um and i think that's great you know just now you know that people are now seeing the opportunity there right. um and it's, it, it's a difficult balance because it's not like uh i can just share any and everything right and nor do i take payments to share you know right, um, because then it kind of skews what it is people are seeing right, so right. you know I'll share online because it's the easiest thing to do but I also try and get out there and 
do it myself. Right, absolutely. You know, whether it was the first time coming out to American Top Team yeah. or going and trying the smoothies over at yeah. the juice bar yeah. uh, or the yoga there. You know, I, I like to try and put myself in the situation first because then I can speak on it. Or then right. when I share it, it's, you know, it's, it's more genuine. So um, I try and, you know, let it be more than just, yeah. just that click and share, absolutely. which is still important, you know, to get the word out. But um, to actually delve into what the community has to offer, uh, I think is the main thing that I just want to pass on to other people, you know, for them to do the same. Um, but yeah. It gives it a lot more substance. Sure. You know, because sure. in, instead of just seeing like, you know, we have a chat and I'm like, oh man, I, I, you know, I saw you post it, you know, shared this from here, what are they about? You yeah. know, so like, oh no. You know, you can explain, like you said, like the, the juice bars and these ones right around the corner, you know, it's like, Oh, their smoothies are awesome, man. They do this and this and that. I've been, you know, I've been there. Yeah. Um, this is what the scenes like. This is what the feelings like. You know, and uh, yeah, it really. And because you have such a, a history of doing that, and like you set the standard that that's how you present yourself and you mm-hmm. present local businesses and people that you not only you know look cool, but like things you believe in, people you believe in, um, stuff you know, products that are worthwhile to, to check out. You know, it, it yeah. really builds up the builds up the community and the, the sharing kind of aspect of it, you know, it's, it's very genuine for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, I, you know, I feel like in a perfect world, because sometimes I try and think ahead on where I want, what I want Hold On Up State to be or where yeah. I want it to go, yeah, 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 and yeah. truth be told, I feel like in a perfect world, or in the future, it won't exist, it won't have to exist, right. because that's how people will work and connect and right, interact, right, right. Uh, you know, especially in just in these uh, smaller areas here. Um, that really trying to get your voice out as an individual is tough in the middle of nowhere. Um, but the more people get together and get on the same page and yes. everyone is, you know, the, the situation and the environment is mutually, mutually beneficial yeah, uh, to everyone involved, uh, I think that's when the, the voice becomes louder and right. that's where you can be heard from anywhere you're at. So, right. you know, when you said before, there are a lot of people that pick up and go, yeah. Or they talk yeah. down on the, you know, on the area. And don't get me wrong, I when Out Chase Alliance first ended, the original, yeah. I did. I, I sold all of my stuff. I sure. quit my job. I moved out west to redefine my purpose. Sure, sure. And, you know, of course, it all led me back here right. um, to finish some of the things I started. But, uh, like I said, it's uh, if, if you don't, if there's something, if there's not something here that you need, or that you're looking for, right. create it. Right, right. Create it. And, you know, that's why um, I like hanging out, you know, talking with uh, people like yourself that are doing it every day. They're not only talking about it. Right. They're not only saying, oh, day one. Right. You know, right. it's day one. You're out here and you're doing it every single day. Right. Um, stuff like growing, people like you helping grow this gym right. from what it was. You know, it's, it's happening all over. Um, and, you know, places like American Top Team, Hold on upstate, uh, just a couple examples, but yeah. you know, I can name a bunch of different Absolutely. Um, companies doing the same. <laughs> like uh, something that something that kind of popped into my mind um, as you talked about uh, unifying a purpose um, with the community and stuff, and, and you said ideally long term, something like hold down upstate wouldn't need to exist because that's how people think and operate. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one, one mindset shift that really ties people into the community is. Uh, instead of thinking, where can I go to get this done? It's who do I know that does this? Right. You know what, right. you know, if I'm looking for X, Y, or Z, like I know somebody locally that does this, mm-hmm. somebody that's putting out this product, somebody I can engage with, somebody I can talk to, mm-hmm. you know? And like a big thing, obviously we're just sitting here having the conversation, starting the conversation, you know? And I think a lot of people don't know that stuff like this exists, you know? And uh, again, back to just kind of the, the climate of the area, you know, is that, uh, I've talked to a lot of people that are, are depressed or anxious, mm-hmm. military guys, PTSD and stuff like that, you know, and people don't know that this kind of thing exists. People don't know that people are having these conversations in this right. area, you know. Um, you know, people don't, the prevailing thought is that no one really kind of gives a shit around here. You okay. know what I mean? Everybody's just here, just existing. Yeah. You know, drugs are a big problem. Alcoholism is a big problem. Uh, unemployment's a big problem, right? All these negative things, you know, and, um, but like you said, if, if there's something here, if, if what you want doesn't exist, create it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's kind of what having these conversations does is it creates 
something that we want that we can be invested in, right. you know, um, and, and build from and kind of grow, grow together, you know, and help other people be invested in that, in sure. that growth as well. Sure. You know, it, you know it, it continually inspires, you yeah. know, as you go on, you know, I, uh, something you just mentioned about how people need the conversation for, whether it's, right. you know, escaping addiction or mental health issues. Sure. Um, you, you've, uh, a friends of mine from My Manic Mind just started a platform uh, called the My Manic Mind Street Team. Sure. And really it's just, it's a group, but it's an open conversation right. of kind of what people are going through and, you know, kind of the things that are weighing on them. And it allows people to get it off their chest and everyone is responding back in the comments. Um, and it's grown quick, quickly because it's, it, it's, it's, it's a strong need around right. here. You know, um, you know, especially as much time as social media takes up in our life, uh, to get caught up in that yeah. isn't you know sometimes can be sometimes detrimental to your uh, you know emotional emotional well being. Yeah. You know what For I mean? Sure. Um, so to have that platform, I, I even saw people are shooting videos now where they're just kind of talking back and forth. Yeah. Um, and this getting all sorts of love and response and things like that, and I think it's, I think it's great to see. And uh, I remember talking with it was Mike Redder that put it together, but he was saying how Hold Down Upstate was an inspiration. Yeah. And he wanted to create, uh, you know, a, a, a place where people can come together for different reasons, sure. and and man, it just keeps growing on and on from there, because uh, that whole idea is going to inspire others. Um, and it'll just keep moving. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's um, that's a huge thing. Uh, one of the coolest things that I've seen happen kind of with the, promoting more of the day one platform, kind of opening mm -hmm. up and talking a little bit more about my own, uh, you know, journey, my own process and stuff like yeah. that is that um, I've had people reach out to me kind of here and there and have a conversation and just, you know, like, hey, man, something that you said kind of struck a chord with me. Yeah. Um, and uh, but I, I think it's really easy for us, you know, kind of get in our own head. Like you said, it's uh, like not for your, it's detrimental to your emotional well-being. Right? Be, yeah. um, <laughs> and when we start kind of going down those chasms, right, uh, we internalize a lot of things and we start isolating ourselves from the world and we, we think that we're the only one. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm the only one going through this or I'm the only one that wants this. No one yeah. else wants, no one else is struggling, you know, and, and uh, Man, it, it doesn't take much stuff that you know, like my manic mind opening up that forum. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, hold down up, say just uh, you know, seeing people throw a hashtag, repping the gear. You know, and you realize how widespread that that thought process is, and that need for community, mm -hmm. and that need mm -hmm. for you know, connection with, with people around you. Um, That's the word right there. Yeah. That's the, the main word. Yeah. Connection. But uh oh yeah, I uh, I was sorry, I was listening. I was zoned in. You're good. You're good. You're good. In, <laughs> You're good. Um, but I, you know looking at it taking a step back it is all being able to connect the need to connect like I said initially back when I started writing my purpose was to be able to communicate because sure. I wanted to connect sure you know like I said connect better with myself connect better with the people around me and the environment around me so I think connection is everything yeah and it's genuine and people are are drawn to it um so I mean it's 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 really unlimited man yeah. as far as Absolutely. what you can do with it Absolutely, mm -hmm. and what's awesome is is the more the more you put out there, uh, the more you expose yourself to, yep. the more you kind of pay attention, um, the more your eyes are open to what's around you. You know, the more places you find to connect. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, you know, you find someone that that likes hip hop. You know, and you're like, okay, cool, we can talk about that, man. Then you sit down, then you have you have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Then you find out. Uh, I think you were telling me a story about a couple of kids you talked to a couple of weeks ago. Um, you guys start talking about the process and and. Um, oh, from the children's room. Yeah, the younger yeah. kids that you yep. said you were rapping with, man, and they, uh, um, so you guys connected initially on hip hop, then, yeah. so that started a conversation, and then you get down the rabbit hole of a conversation, and all of a sudden you find, like, these guys understand the process, they understand this, sure. they understand that, sure. you know, and you, um, the connection grows, you know. Yeah, you know, because it's, it's almost a, a universal idea, whether it's spoken or unspoken, and it's something that, will either you know is uh comes to intuition i think but it's also something that can be dusted off like the idea is right. sitting in us right. and if we go through enough things or have enough conversations with the right people it's like it's dusting off that that old archaic uh, uh 
idea of connection, of the need for this human connection. And, and yeah, people latch right on. I, we, we started off, like I said, when I met uh, these couple of kids through the children's home, uh, I knew that conversationally my end was music. Sure. That's why they had reached out to me because they sure. were you know, a couple of hip hop heads. Um, and I was able to use that to branch off into any category of life that right. you know, we needed to talk about. And we were just talking about how the art itself, I mean, music is cool, you know, a lot of people use it for an image, a lot of people try and get paid off it, but before that, it can be used as a tool, you know, right. to, to transcend where you are, um, how you're living, how you see the world, um, but it's a tool nonetheless, right. and I think that's what I was trying to pass on to them, or I thought I was, you know, right. saying, oh, I would use it for da-da-da, and they... And they were a lot, you know, they were young, they were teenagers. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, I get that. I use it for this and that because of this and that. And I'm like, it, yeah. they're already on top right, of it. Right, you know right, what right, I mean? Right. I'm not kicking anything new to anybody. Right. Uh, you know, it never did, but you know, sometimes it takes, you know, the first person to come out yeah. and say it, you mm -hmm. know, just kind of out loud and put themselves out there. And uh, even when you hit me up about this, I thought it was a great idea, but one of the things I, had to go and rework on was just being vulnerable you know the so yeah. there's a there's a huge power and upside in vulnerability sure. and sure. you know i've been watching videos on it like ted talks and you know reading on the need for that vulnerability yeah. um as a as a way to connect or be open to be connected with Absolutely. be open to you know, to, to failing a couple times, stuttering a couple times, yeah. um, but also, you know, open to the success that it might bring as well. So I appreciate you, you know, for, for kicking off, you know, something like this. I think it's a great idea because um, it helps me and I'm sure to help others sure. get out of their sure. comfort zones and, and, and kind of speak on what they're going through. Sure. And not only that, but how they go through it, because I think that's how I learn. Yeah. Through conversation yeah. and seeing and hearing and watching other people go through their processes um, certainly helped me better understand my own. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, I wouldn't be doing my, my due justice if I did not take the opportunity uh, to kind of plug uh, Brene Brown here. Um, so in vulnerability, if you really want to dig deep into like the power of vulnerability, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, Dr. Brene Brown, she does, uh, she's got a couple, she got a TED Talk on it. Um, she's got actually uh, some Netflix special. I don't know if I'm going to trouble it. for pumping Netflix, but nah, yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> I, I think that's the one I watched, the one, yeah. uh, TED Talk. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, tremendous, man. And, and, and she, she's actually done like research on it and is very studied on it and stuff. Um, but uh, she talks a lot about how that vulnerability uh, goes to connection. And helps you understand like uh, shame but also courage and, mm. and oh my god so many things man you just uh she's got several books out there and so mm. and just tremendous tremendous woman um i, I love reading her stuff and, and hearing more what she has to say about that vulnerability uh which it's interesting because um you know you kind of talked about purpose and uh how you've had to redefine your purpose as time goes and stuff, um, moving out west and then coming back you mm -hmm. know and, uh, really just flowing with life and letting it redirect you. Yeah. Um, so when I kind of, I started exploring vulnerability a little bit on my own um, and opened up and made, uh, the first time I really wrote the story about day one, it was like before I made the actual like Facebook page and before I Instagram, like really got involved in social media with it, I would, um, every once in a while I'd throw out a post and I'd talk about day one and that's when I started developing the mentality and stuff. Uh, yep. But the first big long spiel I did and explained the story and, and really um, opened up publicly about my alcoholism and how I was struggling with depression um, and really really raw stuff and like really vulnerable and the second I had posts I had like a like mini anxiety attack you know what I mean just, oh yeah sure you, know, you can't take it back well, well I, I mean you regret. could you know but um, I was just like alright let's see what happens let's yeah. see what happens and through that uh, the conversations I've had the way I've been able to connect with people uh, people I met at the gym um you know, friends of mine mm -hmm. that, you know, I haven't talked to in a while. And uh, the the immediate connection that I, I started recognizing from that, and it was all opened up through vulnerability. And then, you know, and then I uh, was introduced to Renee Brown from a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden it, it starts clicking, it starts making sense. And um, so like you said, 
understanding other people's processes mm -hmm. and the things that they've done, uh, right or wrong or indifferent, you know, um, understanding what they've gone through kind of helps you understand your own. And sure. so understanding somebody who's researched vulnerability and been through it and exposed themselves and, and uh, in, in a very raw and a very real way, you know, um, being able to track that and, and compare my process to hers and understand, you know, then you can kind of understand a little bit of maybe what's in store for you or make sense of what you've already gone sure. through. Sure. Um, and, uh, and I love, um, another thing you touched on, I started gravitating towards this notion of, uh, there's, there's nothing new, just different packaging. Mm. Like you said, you're not going to spit anything new to anybody, sure. right? But it's the way you put it, mm -hmm. the way you package it. It's your own personal exploration and journey. And through that, somebody might, might, it might resonate with somebody differently. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, and that's endless. That's everywhere. You know, and we can have these conversations. There's every single time we sit down and talk, there's something that you say that strikes me in a different way. You know, like, oh, I was thinking about that. And that, you know, that kind of makes it make a little bit more sense, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is why it's so important to have conversations. It's so important to understand that you're not the only one going through it. You're not the only one with the process. You're not the only one that's searching for purpose and, yeah. and trying to make sense of it all. You know, you know, and, and it's like, uh, so you know, listening to other people's process or how they view it or how they see it, uh, it's almost like if you're staring at a picture and you're looking for something and you can't find it anywhere and you've looked for hours, for days, whatever it is, and you're almost giving up and you're like, it's not there. It's not there. It's just not even in the picture. Now, if someone were to come up and they're like, and they don't tell you where it is and they just say, oh yeah, I see it. Then you're like, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, let, me, yeah. let me start this again. Yeah, and then yeah. nine times out of ten, right. the next five minutes is there right. and you see it. Right. So, you know, it's just that little extra push, you know, it's just a reminder that there is the other side to, yeah. you know, what you're doing and where you're going. Absolutely. And that people have been there, you know, right. in your lowest times, you're not the first person in that place. In your highest times, you're not the first person in that place. Right. Um, so, you know, again, I guess that has to do with connecting. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's what that made me think of. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. And uh, um, kind of uh, revitalizing your vigor, you know, kind yeah. of, like you said, sure. just that extra kick in the ass. Because like, cause you, you get burnt out. For right? sure. Um, and just, that's like kind of, the, um, I, we've talked a little bit about uh, the difference between motivation and discipline. You said this right? the other day, didn't you? Yeah. What so was that you, again? <laughs> so you get, um, you know, everybody wants to be motivated. Everybody was like, I need someone to motivate me to do this. I need someone to motivate me to do that, right? Motivation goes away. Motivation is finite and it's mm -hmm. temporary, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, kind of using your metaphor on the picture, you can be motivated. Like, I'm gonna find Waldo in this picture. I'm gonna find him, you're pumped. Well, an hour and a half goes by, your motivation is gone. <laughs> and you're tired, you're cross-eyed, you, you know, you yeah. can't, can't make sense of it, right? But that's where discipline kicks in yeah. because you made a promise to yourself that you're gonna accomplish this task. You made a, make a promise to yourself that you're going to work every day. Mm -hmm. You made a promise to yourself that you're gonna do one, you know, for me, it's one small thing every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I need to make me better so I can help other people be better. And I'm gonna do that every single day. And that's the discipline, right? right. And there's some days where I wake up and I'm super pumped about it. I'm mm -hmm. motivated. I'm like, I'm gonna to kick today's ass. I'm gonna, and I do 10 things that day. I'm just an awesome human being. <laughs> and then there's some days that I wake up and I just throw my phone across the room because I don't want to get out of bed, sure. you know, and that's where, you made that promise to yourself. Or you just stay on it and scroll for an hour yeah, and more. Yeah, oh, bro, yeah, I hate yeah. that. You don't get shit that. done, you don't Nothing. get anything done, you don't move, right? But eventually, mm -hmm. the discipline kicks in and you're like, Go. all right, I'm off. I promise myself I'm gonna do this, mm -hmm. right? And if you, you know, you, and you have to have your purpose. You have to have that reason, it has to be internal. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you have external sources and you have all of these reasons, right, you can have reasons for everything, but if you don't have a purpose, don't do it. Well, I'm gonna do it for so and so. I'm gonna sure. do it for this. My mom would be proud of me if yeah. I did that. You know, my brother would think this of me if you know that. Sure. My kids, this and like I have to do this for my kids. You know, but yep. it, but it fails, it fails, it fails, it fails until you can internalize that. Until you have that drive, and until you want to establish that discipline, something to be disciplined yeah. for. Great you point. Know? Great point. And you know, and I remember. Well, I, I say remember like yeah. I used to go through. I <laughs> right, still right, go through right, bouts right. where I am not feeling inspired. Sure. Well, I'm looking around and there's no motivation. Sure. Uh, and so I'd go and I'd try and read up on it, you know, educate myself sure. on it, thinking there's some intellectual 
uh, uh, you know, calculation uh, sure, for sure. a moment. And one of the most important things I had come across, which touches on what you were saying, is that if you're not uh, motivated, um, work brings motivation. If you're not motivated to sure, work, sure. Do, just doing the work, yeah. just do it. Yeah. And that brings motivation. And it seems like an oxymoron, you know what I mean? Right, right. You know, until I started just doing it myself. Just yeah. don't worry about the inspiration. It, it exists. Right. It, is, right. it exists. You right. just got to dust it off, you know, every right. now and again. Right. So, uh, oh, yeah, one of the most important things, and I would write it on all of my whiteboards, but work brings motivation. Sure. So. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, man. Um, my kind of my spin on that is always uh, uh, just go through the motions and it'll come back. Mm-hmm. You know, um, mm-hmm. so uh, especially how it relates to martial arts. Obviously, that's a you know big part of my life, so that's always my go-to metaphor. Mm-hmm. Um, and you stagnate, you plateau, man. It doesn't. Sure. It doesn't. I mean, like you said, like you know, hip hop, martial arts, whatever artistic outlet, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever your purpose is, whatever your drive is, it, it stagnates because it can't always be up. You know, just boop straight to the top. Sure. It's never like that. And the, the, you said motivation wanes, inspiration wanes. You look mm-hmm. around, you look around, you go looking for inspiration, it's never there. Right. Inspiration comes when our hands are busy. Mm-hmm. Inspiration mm-hmm. comes when we work. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, sometimes you just have to go through the motions and sometimes it sucks. Yeah. But that's that discipline. Yep. You know, just making it, you know, and once you understand that, it gets easier. Right. Because then it's part of the process. Then you trust in that process sure. and you know you're going to stagnate for a while. But sometimes stagnating is a sign of growth. Mm-hmm. Because you know, okay, well, I've been, I've been crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Okay, I got to a point where now I need to revamp. Maybe I need to look inside. Maybe I need to find a different approach, you know. Um, but it's part of that process. Yeah. You know? you know, in the process, of course, like we were saying before, stem, stems from that core purpose. But right. all the practical components that come with a craftsmanship, whether it is music, whether it is boxing or martial arts, mm-hmm. um, you know, and there's a list of things. But, like all these practical components that can be utilized in everyday life, in the workplace, in the family, uh, you know, a family place, whatever. Family, family, family place, sure. the home. Home, sure. <laughs> but, you know, things like discipline, uh, things like consistency, uh, you know, these are all uh, characteristics, you know, of a strong, uh, I don't know, a very, a very productive life to say yeah. the least. Yeah. So it's not just the things that I learned through music um, or practicing music or boxing or practicing boxing can be used outside of those rings yeah. um, or those realms. And so I am better for it all the way around. You know, I Rakim, so, oh, I'm probably dating myself, but Rakim came up in the you know late 80s and the, in, the, in the 90s, um, one of the pioneers, really dope MC out of New York. But uh, he had this song called Paid in Full. And it was cool. It was catchy. But I didn't necessarily understand what it meant until I started later doing it myself. And all the writing, you know, because people think, oh, yeah, the money's going to come in. That's going to come in. Fans going to come in. But with the writing itself and the going through and experiencing and doing shows and maybe not having your best show. and right. maybe, You right. know, maybe having your, you know, um, the ups and downs of it. Uh, it's beneficial just to to me yeah. you know to me as a person um, no matter what aspect of life I'm in um, so what's that uh, for those of us who aren't so educated on, on the hip-hop scene what uh, what's kind of the basic pretense of that song paid in full <laughs> so you know it's about uh, going through the process and doing what he loves and right. having that music help him right. to be a better him right like all that writing you know sure. like I said the writing helps me to better communicate. Right, right, right. And through communication helps me get connected with people who also right. can communicate well. Um, so it's just about using those tools or those components that you get from right. this craft that you love um, and how you can apply them just in the everyday life. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, kind of looping back, it's, it's not like we're sitting here talking about anything brand new. Nothing brand new. You know, new. like you said, oh, the 80s, early 90s, or yeah. whatever, you, you know, so that was his packaging. Mm-hmm. Right, we're taking that and, and going back to that and following his process and, and how much, especially how much it it mirrors yours. Sure. Right? You know how much yours is, is kind of following a lot of these same things, right? And seeing, you know, like like we talked about, you're not alone. You mm-hmm. know, and, and that's that's his packaging. This is our yeah. packaging. You know what I mean? It's not a new idea. It's not a novel idea, but it is significant. 
Yep. You know, it's it's not unique. It's it's very universal. But everybody has a very unique way to, yes. to look at it, and explore it, and understand it. You, you know, know. Yeah, and I think these are. I would like to think that these are the conversations that help people realize, like, we're not just talking about ourselves. I'm not right. just talking about myself, but, right. you know, these are opportunities for everybody to kind of hop in the pool and, right. and, and uh, redefine your own purpose. Sure. Because um, it does. It works for all people. And right. I think that's why, uh, like, I started music late. Right. Late in life. Because right. I, I didn't think it was for everybody. I, I was never in school. I never played an instrument. Yeah. No band, no chorus, anything like that. Um, I just appreciated music for what it was. Um, but once I started to understand, if you put the work in, you know, you always talk about those 10,000 hours. Right. If you right. put the work in, man, there's nothing that you can't do. Right. There's nothing you can't do. Right. And I think that's, I don't know, that's one of the most beautiful things about life. Right. Honestly. Absolutely, man. It's, um, so, you know, looking at, at how, you, you know, you talked about how you take your writing and your exploration of hip hop and, and, and the artistry behind it and stuff like that and you you take those concepts that you learn there and you apply them to other other points. Self of life. reflection, yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Sure. Absolutely, man. And you look at that and I, I mean I do the same thing with, with training, with martial arts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The way I, what I learned here and my, my patience, my consistency, shedding the ego, mm -hmm. um, being willing to fail, being vulnerable, all of these things and they and it applies to how you build relationships with your friends, your family, your loved ones, you sure. know what I mean? Uh, how you connect to new people, how you build relationships with businesses, how like how you do everything, right? And I Every think everybody has something like that in their life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, You're saying that core, the purpose that they can plug into, right? That self-generating, right. yeah, yeah, something that too. they, you know, instead of just, well, why does my life, you know, why is life hard right now? Why right. does this relationship suck? Right. When there's somewhere else we can pour our heart into, something that, some creative outlet that that drives us and fuels us, right? And we can mm -hmm. take metaphors from that and expand them to other places in life you know and that's all it's about because like like rakim he was trying to get up out of the streets you sure. know what i mean and sure. he said music allowed him to do that right um for me i think initially yeah, i was trying to give myself a, 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 a you know a goal or a vision right you know right. i was i was yeah. all over the place i was sure. very much living for the moment so it helped me um find something that allowed me to see a future and yeah. that made yeah. me grounded um, and and uh, and it was just what I needed at the time or else right. you know who knows where it would have right. ended up yeah um, but that yeah. direction it's easy to get lost oh yeah you know? oh yeah I was way lost man for sure I was all the way lost for sure uh -huh. but I, th I think that uh, again man it's it's a universal concept mm -hmm. I think it resonates for everybody and I mean even if uh, you know, even if we're at a place where we feel like we have a little bit of direction and stuff right now, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't always last forever. Feeling like you have direction doesn't always last forever, you know, right. but having that that end goal, you know. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I, uh, a few years ago, something that kind of popped into my mind one day is like, all you need is a picture and the pieces, and you'll figure out how to put it together as you go, mm -hmm. right? And you build a puzzle, you just look at the box, like eventually, all these pieces right here, eventually that's what it's gonna be. Right. So once you find your purpose, and once you understand what that picture is, mm -hmm. then you then as these pieces come to you, you, you touched on something earlier, I can't remember exactly how you said it, um, but basically that you don't always understand right away what something means, or what something is, or how it's gonna factor in at the end. Right. You find this piece and you're like, all right, I don't know what this is gonna be, but I know that I'm gonna need it later. You know, mm -hmm. um, And just being able to make sense of every single thing that life throws you is part of that part of that process part of, sure. of building and, and attaining that purpose yep. you know yeah you know certainly even just appreciating you know all the things that life might throw at you yes uh maybe it's not anything you can use right now maybe the connection is not anything you could use in general but appreciating right. you know what it is and why it right. came you know being, to you now being you grateful know? being grateful yeah. and then you'd be surprised how many of those things come back around yeah um yeah. you know and not I don't know, you know, I, I'm not trying to get too mystic, you know, mystic sure, with sure. it, but uh, just from my experience, you know, um, those karmic type, uh, you know, conversations or experiences sure. uh, exist sure. heavy. Absolutely, heavy. man. And um, I think a lot of it, you know, is not expecting anything out of it. Right. Just accepting. Accepting. You yep. know, you go in, you have no expectations, you don't know how it's going to manifest or... 
you know, not expecting it to come back around. You don't do something because you're like, all right, this is going to pay off long term. You, right. you do it because it's it's what you feel compelled to do. It's what you feel moved to do. It's what you feel is right to do. Um, or it's the way that you are grateful and express your gratitude for a situation, you know, yeah. making the best of the moment. Uh, and then later on, when it comes back, you're like, oh, shit, man, that's pretty that's pretty cool that it worked out that way. Yeah. You know? And then you're and then you're grateful again. Yeah. You know, just double dipping in that gratitude bowl. Sure. You know? No, you can never go wrong being grateful, I think. Absolutely. Even, even obstacles, you know, grateful yeah. for obstacles because they allow you to uh, adapt. Right. They have to adapt right. to that change. Right. And, uh, and you're always better for it. And, yeah. But, you know, then again, that's just the perspective. Right. You know, it's perspective. Um, and, right. and uh, you know, things, slight things like that can help carry you over, you know, some of the harder times. Oh, man, big uh, time. It's perspective is everything. Big time, it's absolutely. Everything. And... Uh, so, you know, again, tying into the process, if you don't have obstacles, if it's easy the whole way, you're not on the right path. Right. right. You know, if, if it's easy the whole way, if you don't fail, if you don't falter, if you don't run into obstacles, if you don't have to readjust, it, you're in the wrong spot. Yeah. You know, um, so there's going to be painstaking, there's going to be labor, there's going to be work, mm -hmm. you know, and just being able to be grateful for that and understand that it's a necessity, yeah. you know, it's big, definitely. Sure. How do we do? Uh, yeah, we have some people watching. Yeah, cool. Appreciate everybody turning in, man. Absolutely. We just, you know, we chatted about this a couple times uh, prior to, but really it was just about turning in the phone on and, and, and going with it, going for it. Yeah. So, yeah, appreciate you guys, you guys jumping in, uh, checking it out for, you know, for however long you did. Um, yeah, and if, uh, if, you, if you liked it, Tune back in next week. Um, I think this is going to be something uh, we would both love to try to do. For sure. Uh, at least a few more times. Um, you know, for us, it's always awesome just getting the chat and just turning on the camera and letting you guys see kind of what uh, conversation between Rick and Quince looked like, you know, yeah. on a semi-weekly basis, you know. Yeah. So. Almost from the start. I remember just years ago, uh, I think you came to a show at Maggie's and next thing I knew it was like me, you, Print, your brother upstairs yeah. on the round table yeah. just taught, you know, everyone yeah. else, we left everybody else downstairs um, or up on the third floor and we were yeah. talking for an hour, two hours, yeah. something like just that just sitting at a booth, man, just chopping it up yep. I love it, I love it <laughs> That's, I mean, yeah, like, I think that's one of the first times we all kind of got, you know, really to know each other on the same page, you know? yep. yep so, um, it's, always, it's always a good time, man, always uh, always enlightening for sure. sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure, man. I appreciate you, brother. So, absolutely. Appreciate you too, bro. So, um, yeah, guys, uh, again, Rick Huntsman here, day one. Quince, I'll chase the Lions, hold on up, stay. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you again soon. Peace.